So I'm watching the number one tennis player in the world, Novak Djokovic, and he's at the Australian Open, where he's won more than anyone in history. And I'm amazed by how much the crowd is uh, is against him, or at least, at least a, a chunk, a, a sizable chunk of the crowd. And he's playing Francis Tiafo. This is an American player who should be relatively unknown in Australia compared to someone like Nick Kyrgios, of course. And, and yet, this is a uh, this is one of the greatest. Um, Comment, commentaries you'll ever hear in the sport of tennis describing these young men with their mullets, uh, with their flags. So these guys are, they formed some kind of outfit called uh, the Church of Francis TFO, the, the ultimate big foe fans. Listen to uh, the tennis commentators describing these young blokes, probably from Queensland, who are very much actively rooting against Novak Djokovic. No respect for the great champion. Uh, take a listen for yourself. <laughs> Well, we haven't got a capacity crowd, but there are a few fans around us, and that's uh, what Wally was saying. They are right in front of us, and they are—they're definitely going to be adding to the profits for the Australian Open in the uh, in the beverage tent. These young Aussies were uh, having such a good time; it got under Djokovic's skin so obviously that after Djokovic takes control of the first set, uh, he fist pumps right at him, and, and and then he challenges them to come out onto the court. He, he motions them down, like, "Why don't you come out?" I don't know if it's for fisticuffs or if, or if he's saying, "Like, take my racket. Let's see if you can do any better, uh, you Queenslander young guys with the mullets. Uh, take take a look for yourself." He made a bad choice. Fist pumping the group of guys that we showed you earlier. He's giving them as good as he got. Oh, and he's calling them down. Pretty good stuff, right? You, you can't make this up. Where, where did these guys come from? It's, uh, it's amazing. Anyways, I'm watching that, and then I'm imagining what it would be like to see Djokovic playing Kyrgios. Because take a look at the crowd for Kyrgios. One of the great matches uh, at the Australian Open you'll ever see. One of the best matches. Five-set epic in the second round. Uh, this is as good as it gets in the first few days of a major. Take a listen to this crowd, this energy, this excitement that everywhere Nick Kyrgios goes follows behind him. Mode. Now, full credit to Ugo Umber for keeping his head on in this match. Uh, you know, he serves for it. He's missing first serves, and the crowd is actively cheering against him, which you know Djokovic would hate. I don't blame Djokovic one bit for yelling at the young guys in the crowd with the beers uh, and challenging them. I, I, honestly, I kind of like that. I also don't mind those guys having a good time. I've, I've been on both sides of that, and in, in my lesser matches that aren't professional matches, I've... I've gone after people watching who are rooting against me, especially if they root for a double fault, if I double fault. And I've been the guy in the crowd with my friends drinking and maybe being a little too rowdy uh, rooting against one player. Uh, so I understand both sides, but full credit to Ugo Umber, who the crowd is cheering every time he misses a first serve towards the end of that match, or especially in the fourth set when um, you know he's serving for the match and Kyrgios is saving match points. And on top of that, they're calling him Goldilocks. There's a guy in the crowd, probably this guy. Take a look at this guy. He's he's definitely having a good time. He might be friends with some of those guys from the church of uh, Francis TFO. Uh, somebody like that guy said, come on, Goldilocks, right? When Ugo's about to serve, it's such a crucial point in the match. They're calling him Goldilocks, I guess, because his hair is kind of light and curly. I don't know, but uh, amazing stuff for Ugo and Bear to, uh, to keep his focus and make it a match, almost winning that thing. But you might be saying out there, hey, Matt, here you go again, all big on Nick Kyrgios saying the sport needs him. But the truth is, he just went five sets in the second round of a major, and he should have got out of there in straight sets if he wants to have any chance to win this thing or beat Dominic Team, who he has up next, who obviously is going to be a tough opponent. But I think Kyrgios summed it up pretty well. Got to give Ugo and Bear credit here because he's actually a very good player. Uh, he's sneaky good. If you haven't watched him much, this is a guy we've been talking about on this show for uh, well over a year now saying, watch out, this guy's very talented. And he's got a great uh, lefty swinger serve. Now, e even players like Nadal, Rafa, other players who are lefties, you're not going to see many who can swing it as hard, that hard of a slice, away from the backhand of a righty in the ad court. And, and he's got a lot more in that. So listen to what Kiro said after uh, the match was over. Kiro says, he's one heck of a player, and I don't think he gets enough credit. He's only going to get better. He's really good. He's a lefty, and he has a really good serve. He can hit all the flat serves, wide on the deuce court, T on the ad court, unbelievable backhand, good forehand, good volleys, good competitor. He's uh, he's one to watch out for. That's from Nick Kiro's himself. But Nick Kiro's found a way to beat this guy despite Nick not playing very much in the last uh, year and a half. So up next... 
you might be saying, all right, that's well and good that he beat the talented young lefty, but he's got Dominic Team, newly minted Grand Slam champion, up next. But think about it. Let me read one quote to you from Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic says, quote, I don't know what they have done with the court, but it's the fastest I have known in the last 15 years, the fastest I have ever experienced at the Australian Open. And we all know Nick uh, um, Dominic Team can get a little shell-shocked sometimes when, when he has uh, the ball coming at him faster than what he's ready for. Nick Kyrgios can bring that kind of heat. We know Dominic Team is not the best returner of serve. Despite being great at everything, we know that sometimes he can have a bad returning day. With a guy like Nick Kyrgios, one of the best serves of all time. I mean, just think about it. Why should Nick not win this match? It'd be a shame if he doesn't show up healthy and give it everything he has because this sport, tennis, absolutely needs it from Nick. We need you, buddy. Go out there and give it your all. Today on Coffee Break Tennis, unfortunately, we're going to have to have a shorter show. Today was supposed to rain, and I have to play a match that's over an hour of a drive away. So we'll be a quick show, but we're going to talk about Djokovic. We're going to talk about Kyrgios. We're going to talk about team. We're going to look at how this top half of the draw is shaping up. Also, Djokovic's serve. Uh, some interesting comments from France's TFO on the Djokovic serve, saying that he's serving like John Isner, of all people. So uh, we'll talk about that and not too much more in today's edition of the show because there's really a lot to talk about when it comes to Nick Kyrgios, Djokovic, and Dominic Team. So let's pop the draw up on the screen real quick and talk about that. By the way, I, I, I love reading the comments. Uh, please do comment below if you have any suggestions. One suggestion has been to work on the lighting situation. I like having the windows open behind me, but apparently a lot of people can't stand uh, the sun out there. I, I don't always shoot videos this time of day. It's an Aussie open thing where I do it earlier in the day when there's more sunshine. It uh, it underexposes your subject, moi, et moi, and uh, it overexposes the background, which is a bunch of, you know, photography talk stuff. It's a, it's a challenge to deal with, but I like having the windows open. Mr. Goat likes it. No windows open. Mr. Goat is not here. So there you go. I hope the lighting is better for the uh, the lighting and film aficionados out there. Anyways, let's take a look at the draw. Put it up on the screen. Uh, Djokovic will play Taylor Fritz who just came through a five set with Riley Opelka. Uh, things are looking good for Novak Djokovic. But then you may have, and we did talk about this, how, um, you know, respect the Stan Wawrinka in that match against uh, Marty Fuchovic, who has been better and better, as I said. Every year at the Australi Australian Open, he looks better and better. Uh, he's a good player. He's a good all-around player. And even though Wawrinka did almost come back and he reminded everyone of what he is capable of, I just don't feel like Vavrinka is at a good place in his career. Uh, he's a big, strong, heavy guy. Guys like I'd prefer a guy for longevity and being able to find your best tennis into uh, more advanced ages. I'd prefer you to look more uh, limber, you know, muscular, but, you know, kind of flexible and gumby like like Djokovic. I think Stan, with the issues he's had with the knees in the past, uh, you know, you hear the things about Rafa, but it's the same deal with Stan. It's going to be harder to find your best stuff and to win five-set matches. He couldn't pull it off. I still have a lot of respect for Stan Wawrinka, but that was kind of what I was expecting. No chance of beating Djokovic the way he is playing here and possibly going down to uh, Marty Fuchovic, which he did. Uh, it was a good match, though. Fuchovic will play Milos Raonic, who is definitely enjoying. And Mutet, uh, Christian Mutet's talented player. You know, not the easiest draw for your second round uh, at a major at all. So Raonic comes through him. And we'll play Fuchovic next. Uh, that could be a really tough match for Raonic. Or I could see Raonic running away with it. It just depends on the weather conditions of that day and how he's serving. It could be a easy, you know, Fuchovic gets no looks at any breakpoint opportunities against Raonic. I could see something like that happening and he comes through in straight sets. Feeling pretty fresh. Able to challenge Djokovic here. Uh, below that we got Duzi Lajevic and uh, Pedro Martinez. Going up against Zverev, who looked pretty good against Cressy. Uh, let, let's say that, that Zverev overall looked pretty good. Came through it in straight sets. First set was a little tight. But uh, I enjoyed watching that match. It, like I said, it, you know, it's interesting to see. I did see there was a good comment saying that, well, what about his brother? You know, Sasha plays with Misha, and uh, he likes to serve in volley. So it's not like Sasha's never played against someone who serves in volleys. But still, it's an interesting match to see someone who serves in volleys so frequently. Uh, if you're a Sasha fan, you'll be pretty delighted to see him come through in straight sets there. And uh, Martinez or Lajevic, 
expect to see Zverev waiting in the fourth round for very likely Novak Djokovic. I'd give Raonic a puncher's chance, as they say, against Djokovic. So that's shaping up our fourth round up top here in the top half of the draw. Looking like Zverev and Djokovic. No surprise there. But now below that, you know, uh, Diego Schwartzman is probably going to come through here and face Chapo or Felix Auger. Uh, Chapo looked pretty good against Tomic, although there was moments where Chapo was getting pretty frustrated with his game, even in a straight sets. I mean, look at that score line, 6-1, 6-3, 6-2. Uh, still, there was times where Chapo looked mad and frustrated with his game. Then we got Dimitrov and Pablo Carina Busta versus Dominic Team or Nick Kyrgios. That's what it's all about for me. We can throw the draw away now. This is the match to see. This is the third round to get excited about. Let's dive right in to breaking down Dominic Team and Nick Kyrgios in this matchup. As I said before, Dominic Team can have bad returning days. Nick Kyrgios uh, is really good at the net. You know, the interesting about interesting thing about Nick Kyrgios is that he, yeah, he likes he's like John McEnroe. You've probably heard that before. The way he acts, the way he behaves on court. But think about it. Who has hands like Nick Kyrgios, besides someone like John McEnroe, besides someone like Roger Federer? Uh, Nick Kyrgios has this unique combination. He's one of the most uniquely talented tennis players we've ever seen in the history of the sport. That's why you have to be excited about this guy. Even if he does want to flush his career down the toilet, you still have to be excited about it when he you know, gives it a half effort. He seems to try harder when he's at home in front of the home crowd. So... Think about this unique skill set. He's got hands like Johnny Mack, like Roger Federer. But Nick also has a serve like Pete Sampras. And he's taller. He can hit all the spots. He's got a true kick serve that he can put anywhere. He's got a good slice serve that he can put anywhere. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, he's talking about Ugo Umber has all the serves. Nick Kyrgios has all the serves. And he's taller than most people. And he has another serve that Pete Sampras probably never thought about having in his day. He's got the underarm serve to throw in there as a changeup. Nick Kyrgios is an extremely uniquely talented, weird collection of skill sets that should be beating everyone. Now, Dominic Team, think about his unique skill set. He's kind of a grinder. I'm not going to call him a pusher because he, he absolutely crushes the ball. But he's kind of like, uh, you know, he's the prince of clay. He's Yes, he's good on hard courts and faster hard courts. But we always notice perfect examples last year. He wins the U.S. Open. But what happened right before that when they did Cincinnati, even though it wasn't Cincinnati, it was in the New York bubble system. But it was supposed to replace the Cincinnati Masters 1000 hard court tournament. Uh, Dominic Team, I think he lost first round. I think it was Krajinovich that was uh, playing him. Krajinovic can hit the ball, can take the ball early and hit it flat. And on a faster court, he took time away from Dom Dominic Team, rushed him. And I, if I remember correctly, that was the reason why Dominic uh, kind of got blown out. I think he won some ridiculously low percentage on his second serve numbers. Uh, couldn't return. I think Krajinovic won like 100% of second serve, something crazy like that in that match. Then he goes on to win the U.S. Open. He gets another chance. Good for him, you know, right? He got to figure out the court and adjust his game. We've seen it at the World Tour Finals where he has a bad start, but then he starts to adapt to uh, the faster court and play better. He's not going to get another chance if he goes down to Nick Kyrgios, and I think this is early enough, even though team beat up on Kepfer looked pretty good. We know team was feeling uncomfortable at ATP Cup. We know he's been practicing hard and should be playing better, but Nick is a unique challenge. The crowd's going to be against him. There's a chance that Nick Kyrgios could win this match if he can just come out and play pretty well. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, Dominic Team's return is not the best for a top player, for a player you expect to have chances at winning majors. Uh, Nick Kyrgios, in theory, could come out there and uh, hold serve pretty easily if he just has, for him, a slightly above average serving day. You would think he'd be able to uh, hang with Dominic Team for a long match. So, like I said earlier, we don't have a lot of time, but I, I just got to put it out there. There's no reason why Nick Kyrgios shouldn't make that a great match. If I have to pick right now, I'm going to go with Dominic Team. But, man, that crowd, this court, the way it's playing, and the skill set from uh, from Nick Kyrgios, it's just crazy to think that he, he's not going to win that match. He should lose on clay, the Dominic Team, absolutely. But it's crazy that he's not, he's not in a place in his career where everyone assumes he's the favorite in this matchup. Uh, let's move on to Novak Djokovic's serve. This is from inews.com in the UK. Djokovic hit 26 aces in this TFO match. Yeah, some people might make a big deal. Oh, that's my timer going off. We better hurry. Some people may make a big deal about uh, dropping a set to Francis TFO. I heard one interesting um, one interesting comment during that match, the TFO Djokovic match from the Commentariat Skaya, saying that 
if you think about it, the Djokovic slice backhand, and they also said, man, maybe it's for Ash Barty. Maybe Australia did it uh, for Ash Barty because she has such a great slice backhand. But the, uh, the commentators were saying how this court is really, we know it's taken the slice serve, but it's really taken a good, uh, well-knifed, attacked backhand slice pretty well. It's staying low. It's, it's cutting. It's like almost a slippery. It's almost like ice out there. It's an ice rink instead of a, instead of a tennis court. Maybe that's why Chapo could do well here because he's a Canadian. But they were saying, also, very interesting to me, Novak Djokovic, not really a great slice backhand. It's good, but he doesn't really get a lot of cut, a lot of action on it. He doesn't really go after it. He mainly uses it as... TFO was doing. TFO was coming with a pretty aggressive slice backhand. It was a pretty good slice, knifing it at him on the surface. It's effective. The easiest way to hit a slice back is, of course, to slice it back. And that's what Djokovic was mainly doing. That's the main purpose of his slice, you could argue, is when, because why would he hit a slice? Usually, the way he moves and his flexibility, he has time to hit a two-handed backhand for a winner or do something to, to you know help himself out with the two-handed backhand. So why should he be working on a slice? But it's an interesting thing. At this year's Australian Open, where the slice is taking well, what a shame Roger Federer is not there to uh, slice and dice the entire field up with his uh, world-class, maybe uh, one of the greatest slice backhands ever. Anyways, let's look at the the Djokovic serve. This is an interesting thing. Djokovic is getting a little more on his serve. Is uh, 26 aces, I believe this article says here. Quote, The numbers seem to indicate Djokovic's instincts about the relatively new surface his victory over Tifa was his third best serving performance ever at the Australian Open, where he has now won 77 matches. In 77 matches, that was uh, the third best serving performance by the numbers Djokovic has ever had. So, interesting to point out that, indeed, what Djokovic says is true. We can see it with the numbers, but also interesting to point out, Djokovic is talking about how, on his service motion, think about a quarterback, think about Tom Brady, who was so wonderful in the Super Bowl victory. Think about quarterback. They don't throw their football from here, you know, because that would look stupid. They throw it from here where they can turn their hips on it and really snap that thing out like a like a floppy noodle is how you want it to do. Let that arm fly. Oh, so sorry about that. So Djokovic is talking about how, notice it's by my head, by my ear, where I'm going to toss it from, right? I'm going to throw my hips into it and toss it. If your racket isn't there, if you have your racket more back on the serve, which is Djokovic is saying that's what he used to do, and he's worked on it with uh, Goran Ivanišević, one of the greatest servers ever. He's worked on keeping it closer to the head. It's easier to generate more power, especially on that flat bomb serve where you try to uh, hit the tee and hit the out wide and to add to rack up some aces. Djokovic is doing it. Of course, the flip side, Djokovic addresses it himself in this quote. He says, quote, it w if I serve well, it does help me. The new court speed is definitely more suitable to big servers. I'm not sure what is the reason why it keeps on getting faster and faster in terms of the speed of the court each year. You can win a lot of free points. At the same time, if you face a big server, it's a huge pressure. If he goes comfortably through his games, I'm going to play Taylor Fritz next round, big server, maybe Raonic in the fourth. You need a lot of accuracy on your serve. So Djokovic, uh, we said it in the draw show. He's going to light some guys up on this fast court with an even faster return because of the surface. But... If Djokovic is a little off on a returning day, if he loses his serve rhythm on a day, say he throws in some double faults and isn't hitting the first serve so well, there could be trouble hanging with a Milos Raonic if he's having a great day. We saw how Milos looked uh, really good in New York for a while until it all fell apart. All right, last thing, and we'll get out of here. Uh, hit the music because i got to go. Nick Kyrgios implosion put on spotlight on a glaring Australian Open issue. This Fox Sports article, uh, it was a great point from Nick Kyrgios. Commentators talk about it all the time. There's a thing called a phantom let. The machine goes off on an ace. The ball didn't hit the net. Everyone knows it. Ugo and Bear hit an ace, and the umpire calls let. Kyrgios is saying, no, no, it's an ace. It's not like Kyrgios is trying to get himself an ace. He's trying to give an ace to his opponent. And then it was really bad. I believe it was in the second set. Nick Kyrgios hits two aces back to back, pretty obviously not let chords, and they both hit uh they both set off the machine he has to do it over two aces back to back and Kiro says I'm not going to play if you don't turn that machine off I understand the umpire that she turned uh she adjusted the sensitivity and turned it down a little but did not turn the machine off just want to put it out there maybe go back to the guy who puts his finger on the net cord to feel if there's a let it's pretty obvious we've been hearing about it from years that sometimes there's phantom lets and uh, it's not a good thing for tennis, so good on you, mate. Uh, Nick Kyrgios, you got this one right. Uh, tomorrow, 
I don't know if we will be back, so we'll see. There could be a show tomorrow. There could not. We'll see how long this may. If I'm playing a three-set epic tonight and getting home really late, uh, I may be playing catch-up tomorrow. So bear with me, Coffee Break Tennis fans. Thanks for being here, and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. If not, we'll definitely see you the very next day. See ya!